Where does this expression come from? It has some very particular pieces to it. The 10x, that's the easiest bit. What does that represent on the diagram? What does that represent? Yeah, Will? There's a rectangle, right? So your, um, your structure here has the rectangular bit down the bottom. It's just got a width and a height. And then what about this other bit hanging out with the square root? Where's that from? That's from, there's, there's this thing up here, right? Now, there are some telltale signs in here that give you clues. For example, when you see the square root, and the two things underneath the square root are both squares, what should that immediately make you think of? Pythagoras, right? And hopefully you did like, get that mental cue. It was a bit of a, a sort of encouragement from us. Like, you know, you can work this out fairly quickly. So you end up with this expression. Now part two, please pay careful attention to this. And um, before we actually launch into it, I'll just explain why part two leads us to put in a part three. It says, find the distance between the vertical sides that maximizes the area of the front barn, front of the barn, right? So you're looking for 2x. That's what you're looking for, aren't you? Because on the diagram there, you can see that is the distance between the vertical sides, okay? But you can see that that's different to part three. Part three is, well, what's the actual area? So they're trying to separate that out so you remember, I've got to work out two things, okay? So, in order to do part two, the calculus part, clearly we need a derivative. Now, I know a lot of you sort of panicked when you saw that, because you're like, gross, this is gonna be disastrous, okay? This is one of the reasons why we give you this in part one, because you guys have seen questions before where we don't give you this, you have to work it out on your own and just have to, like, good luck and make sure it's right on your own. This time we give it to you so that you know even though you come up with something weird, it's right. Like, it's us trying to encourage you in the right direction. So this is messy, you are going to have to differentiate this mess. So let's do it one piece at a time. This bit's easy, derivative of 10x is 10. Okay, <laughs> that was the easy part. When you come to this, because there's quite a lot of mental gymnastics involved here, I like to separate out this problem into a couple of pieces. So, if I say this is u and v, right? I'm obviously gonna have to use the product rule here, but I'm gonna have to use more than the product rule. To differentiate v, what am I gonna need to use? Chain rule, very good, function of a function. So over here, I'm gonna write v separately, and I encourage you, if you don't do this, when you're doing your derivative, if it's a complicated one, do a separate piece. So if you're following along with your own working, do this. I'm gonna write it in the form that makes it most useful, right? This is actually 100 minus x squared raised to what power? A half. And using this, now it's ready for chain rule, okay? So I'm just gonna get v dash out of this. What do I do? What, is, what are the two parts of chain rule? Inside and outside. So we'll do it in that order, it doesn't matter. The derivative of the inside function is minus 2x. It's just that, that component there. So I'll just chuck that out the front. And now I have to do the outside. The outside is something to the power of a half. And I know how to deal with that. We'll bring the power down. We will reduce the power by 1. And we're done. Okay? I mean, it's messy, but that's the derivative. Okay? We can tidy up a little bit, I suppose. The half and the 2 will cancel. That negative a half means it's actually on the denominator. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks to me like this is what we end up with. How's that? Happy? So we have our v and our v dash. Now I'm ready to actually launch into product rule properly. So it's going to be plus v. u dash in this case is 1. Plus, I've inconveniently run out of bit of space here plus u, there it is, times v dash. Well, I just worked out what v dash was, so let's just chuck the whole thing in there. How are we doing so far? I'll tidy that up a teeny bit. So we've got 10 plus this guy minus this guy. So far, so good? Okay, so we have a derivative. It's messy, but I've been told, I have great confidence that I'm differentiating the right thing, and I think you can go ahead, you can check my chain rule, check my product rule, I think it looks all right. Now, what are we trying to do? Look back at the question. It says we are trying to maximize this area. So we're using the derivative of area. I'm going to find turning points, I'm hoping to find turning points, um, when, now by the way, I say may, why do I say may? Because I'm about to finish this sentence with 
dA on dx equals zero, but of course that's not a guarantee of a turning point, is it? Um, what would it be if it wasn't a turning point? It would be one of these, um, yeah, one of these horizontal points of inflection. Okay, so that's why I had to say they may exist. So now I'm going to try and solve this thing. So I get, let's have a look at it, ten plus that minus that equals zero. Okay. Now, how many people at this point thought, uh oh, what am I going to do here? Right? It does look messy. You, it's not a quadratic. It's not a nice, convenient kind of thing that we've learned to deal with. So, and it's in a two-unit test, for goodness sake. It's not, I'm not used to thinking polynomials in this case. But there is knowledge that you have that can help us work with this. Can someone give me a suggestion? Someone who got to this point. What could I do next that might make this a bit easier? Any thoughts? I could multiply through by the square root of 100 minus x squared. Okay, that could work, all right? Before I do that, I want to note that that also creates problems. It doesn't just solve problems, it creates problems. It gets rid of this square root down here, that's good. It gets rid of this square root by making it like a, a full whole thing with a power of one, but it, it adds it over here. You get the square root of 100 minus x squared, you can't avoid it, okay? So do you think this is still a good way to go? Still give it a go? Because sometimes you have to be patient with things, right? Let's see what happens. I'm going to get this. How's that? Does that look okay? Did I multiply through correctly? It looks good. Now, this is still messy. It's better than this because at least it's got no fractions in it. But it's still got this square root. And I really can't touch that. I have to resolve it in some way. Okay, so before I deal with that, let me just collect some like terms over there. Plus 100 minus 2x squared. Does that look right? So, what am I going to do now? What can be done with this? What's the normal way you get rid of square roots? You normally square, right? That should get rid of square root. But you guys can already tell me, in its present form, this equation is not fit to be squared. Because it's just going to be like... It's got three terms in there. It's a trinomial. You're going to end up with nine terms out the end. It's going to be an unmitigated disaster. So I need to do the, a tiny rearrangement here so that I can square and it's not all four. So what rearrangement would you like me to do? Eric. I think if you divide by two and then take the square root of the inside. Divide by two. And then subtract the square roots from both sides. Yeah. Let's watch what happens if we take Eric's suggestion. I've got 50 minus x squared left on this side. On the right hand side, I'm going to have, you tell me, minus 5 square root of. Now, just before we actually do some squaring with this, this is a situation you've actually already met before, just not in the context of this kind of question. We met this before in locus. Do you remember that? Sometimes we would say, ah, oh, the distance from like this point to this point is always the same for our variable point. Do you remember that? Things like that. Okay? And so what you were saying was a distance, distance formula, two points, equals some other distance. Right? And we've seen this before, you square both sides, it's all fine. Okay? But other kinds of locuses, lock, lock I, other kinds of these things, right? they don't ask it to you in this way. They say maybe the sum of this distance plus this distance is always equal to some fixed number. Okay? And when you square out like this, it's terrible. It's awful. You have to rearrange things. This is what Eric's suggestion has done. If I square now, this thing will have no square roots, and this thing will have no square roots. So this is my best option for getting rid of it. So let's do it. I have space here. Left-hand side, what am I going to end up with? 2,500, take away 100x squared plus x to the 4. We'll come back to that guy in a second. Right hand side, negative 5 times negative 5, 25, all multiplied by that thing is no longer a square root because we squared it. Okay. Now, let's just pause for a moment and contemplate because at this moment, I'm sure a lot of you hit the panic button because you're like, that's aquatic. <laughs> I'm not supposed to get quartics in the two unit course, okay? That's true, kind of. It's aquatic at the moment. 
But in a minute, we're going to turn it into a problem that you can deal with and you're very comfortable with. To get there, let's just, let's just simplify this. I can do a lot of simplifying here, right? Um, I've got some like terms to collect. So I'm going to rearrange this so x to the 4 is out the front. I have minus 100x squared here. How many x squareds are over here? Minus 25. So I will add 25x squared to both sides, which I think leaves me with that number of x squareds. Yeah? OK, um, I have 2,500 over here. Yeah? But I also have 2,500 over here, don't I? So in fact, if I just subtract from both sides, then I just get 0. How's your brain doing so far? Can you see, yes, it's aquatic. But it's aquatic that is very easy to tame. Because look, I can just pull out a common factor, right? Namely, x squared. That leaves me with x squared take away 75. And this is quite doable, right? Um, x squared. What's the solution that comes from this factor? x equals 0. But that's not a, what is this, a barn, right? x equals 0 doesn't give you a barn. So you can disregard the solution we're going to get from here. Okay. What about here? Well, if I factorize, it might be a bit clearer. Uh, difference of squares. Again, there's a solution here I can disregard. Which one? The, um, this x plus root 75 gives me a solution, a 0, of negative root 75, which is, which is no good. Right? So I'm going to say here x equals all of these solutions, but x is greater than 0. Reason? It's always a reason. What's the reason? Length. length. Thank you very much. OK, so from here I have my 1 solution. You can tidy that thing up. Okay? I think from there it's not too dramatic to work out what your actual area is. It's just a substitution. Are there any questions? So, I know a lot of you is for the sake of time. Yeah? What that probably means is you will need to have a look at earlier questions. If you ran out of time on this question, then this question was not the problem. It was the earlier ones that ended up taking too long. That's, that's what happens with last questions on an exam. Okay? So maybe you want to find what's the question which just took you forever, or you, you didn't arrive at the solution quickly, and so that soaked up your time and you didn't get there. Okay? <laughs>